Put your dot in the center of the black circle. Don't think about holds or any of that. Just point of aim equals point of, I didn't tell you to recover. Put, <laughs> get up. <laughs> All right, folks, trips are awesome. So this is an announcement. If you like taking trips for vacation, you want to do one with like-minded folks like warrior poets from all over the country, we are going to Africa in 2021 in January. If you want to go on safari with us, ooh, and let's theme, let's cue up some like Africa jungle music. There we go. So anyway, we'll see giraffes and there's Masamari and there's like volcano stuff, or maybe it's a, I don't know what it is. It's going to be super fun. So if you're interested in any of that link down below, we also have a few spots left this year for the Holy Land. If you want to check that out with us as well, links down below, but it's time to roll a video. Here we go. All right, guys, we want to talk about zero theory, trajectory, ballistics, all that jazz. And I have drawn out for you this brilliant little diagram. I normally don't make it quite so sexy, but we have some folks that tuned in on the YouTube. Everybody wave at YouTube and say, hey, mom. Hey, all right. And we even have this nice ambiance here, this fire. Uh, right here is our diagram of different zero distances. And I'll just go ahead and say, uh, though today we're going to be shooting at the 50, uh, at 50 meters on the line. Uh, that is not an actual 200 meter zero. It's an approximation of, it's really a 50 meter zero. And what can be meant by all these different zeros, a zero is basically where your point of aim, as you're looking through your optic, your sights, whatever you're looking through, your point of aim is equal to, it matches your point of impact. So what you're looking at, the dot or the reticle, your round impacts directly through that. If you want a 100 meter zero, the only way you can get a 100 meter zero is to actually shoot at 100 meters. Everything else is an approximation, right? And your zero can shift if you had a muzzle device or a can on the end or any of that stuff. There's some atmospherics, you change ammo. There can be little shifts. If you move your head around and put it in a different place, that's a, a shift in parallax. Your perceived point of aim uh, uh, in relation to your point of impact can shift. And so all kinds of little variables can dork this up. If you moved your optic or took it off and put it back on, unless it's kind of QD, attachment and you put it right back on the same spot, your zero is lost. And so zero can be a finicky little thing. We're trying to get our point of aim to equal our point of impact at a exact distance, uh, right? Where I'd like you to mount your optics, by the way, is I would like personally, unless you have another real strong reason to put it somewhere else, but especially in the example of just a simple red dot, take your red dot and put it as far forward as the upper receiver as you can without sharing any space with the upper rail. I like it farther away from your eye so that when you're scanning in a ready attitude right here, so that you're scanning in a ready attitude right here, you're not, your optic isn't so close that you get caught in your optic. People when they're in and around structures, whether it's a tactical team or whether it's you guys just thinking about home defense or whatnot, the closer your optic gets, then all of a sudden you kind of under stress, get more and more in your optic and then it, you get more than ever tactical tunnel vision as you're seeing the whole world through that optic right there. You're getting sucked into your sights is kind of the tactical quick way to say it. Get out of your sights. Now, if you're interested in long range precision or you're a little bit more old school, 100 meters was kind of the big one you went to. I remember 100 meter holds, it's permanently ingrained and I can really just see the world in increments of 50 meters, 50, 100, 150, 200, 253. I can really judge distances within about that pretty decently, right? And I know with a 100 meter hold, what that means is as, well, as soon as the bullet leaves the barrel, it is going up relative to the optic. Now the bullet, the moment it comes out of the barrel is falling. It's not all of a sudden finding an air pocket and riding up like it's got lift. Instead, it is falling at 9.8 meters per second squared like everything else in the world. It is falling. But your optic relative to the barrel is slightly oriented down, which means really your bullet is kind of being lobbed up and then it's coming down. So that's what's happening. You have your point of aim, which is infinity, straight line, and then your barrel slightly oriented up, and you can't even perceive it, but it is. 
comes up and so the bullet will come up to your field of view or above it and then it'll come down. 100 meter zero means where the bullet comes down, when it comes down, it will strike that point of aim and that will be your 100 meter zero. 200 meters means it's not gonna fly quite as flat. It's gonna have a little bit more of an upward arc to it and it will cross around the 50 meter mark. This is different depending on a whole bunch of different factors, but generally speaking, maybe yours crosses at 42 and maybe yours crosses at 54, but generally speaking, it is a fair approximation to say a 50 meter zero, which we're gonna do, is kinda closest to 100, 200 meter zero. And so it's more of a wide arc where it comes down at 200 instead of 100. So with a 100 meter zero, pop quiz, you too, YouTube. Be honest, comments down below. Uh, you're gonna edit it, cheaters. Uh, if you wanted to shoot a 200 meter target with a 100 meter zero, what would you have to do with your dot or reticle? You aim a little bit high to be able to hit that. It may just be a couple inches, right? But you'll aim a little bit high to hit that. What if you were shooting a 200 meter zero, but you wanted to shoot a target at 100 meters? you aim a couple inches low. So is it, you, you already can see, if you don't understand what your bullet is doing, zero theory and ballistics, you can get into trouble because at, at seven yards, say you want to canoe someone's cranial ocular right here with a bullet, where do you aim on them? You should be aiming at the hairline, high. This is really important for hostage where you, somebody's got, you know, your wife are like, put it down. And you're like, okay, I'll do whatever you want. But you're like, I'm not gonna do whatever you want. I'm gonna kill him right now. <laughs> I'm not gonna do that, I'm gonna kill him. It's like, okay, I'm putting it down. But you're not, you're like, aha. But you don't put the bullet on their hairline or the, your red dot on their hairline. Instead, you put it right in the middle of their face. While, meanwhile, your wife's head is right here. And so when you, hold, you forget your hold, you're actually gonna shoot your wife in the forehead. And some of you really like your wives. And so that can be really, problematic. I know it's a morbid joke. Sorry. I'm not going to edit it out either. Just there you go. Uh, if anyway, remember your holds so that we don't have undue collateral damage and you don't go to prison mourning your wife for murder. So anyway, you'd need to aim higher at seven yards and then you aim point of aim, point of impact at 50, and then you aim low at 100, and then perfectly on at 200, and then a little high at 300. So you're doing this. And meanwhile, really, some people who are theorizing in their chairs right now, like, maybe I think this. Well, like, hold on. Outside, can you really tell the difference between 75 meters and 125? Do you really know that? In which case, uh, be careful until you got some real world experience where you can really kind of guesstimate that or you're carrying around a range finder all the time, which you are not. Uh, this, don't get too excited here, bro. Let's approach this with some humility. 200 meters is kind of the best ballistic average, though there's a strong argument that the 300 is. And what that means is, is if you have a 100 meter zero and you have different targets at different distances, right? And you're like, oh no, this one, this one, this one, that one far away. If you had a 100 meter hold, as you get farther away, your bullet is going to be hitting the dirt and you don't engage that target. And under stress and fear where really goofy stuff happens, it's confusing, you forget to do simple stuff that you never would have forgotten on the range, you will forget in real life. And so it can be problematic because you just forgot your holds. Happens all the time, even to really good uh, shooter sometimes, but with a 200 meter zero or a 300 meter zero, regardless of the engagement distance, if you just put dot on them, center mass, and pulled the trigger, you'd hit them somewhere within a few inches. And you're saying, that's good so that I'm not leaving anything to chance. This is why holds and trajectory and zero theory is really important so that we can have confidence to know exactly what the bullet is doing from moment to moment in its flight path. Until you understand your holds, ballistics and trajectory, this kind of stuff's zero theory, your foundation as a shooter has not been laid. And so we have to understand the theory properly.
cool. Now, what we're about to do is we're going to get out on the firing line. Unless you have a real strong preference for one of these, I put everyone at a 5,200 meter zero. If you really want 100 meter zero, then great. We're going to be aiming at three inch black circles at 50 meters. And if you're instead of dead center, you're just a little bit low toward the bottom of the circle. Well, that's about a hundred meter approximation. It's good enough that we'll have a fun day training and you're not going to be missing all day. All right, gents, the last thing we have to do before we actually shoot for zero is ensure that our shooting platform is good to go. So Mike is going to help us out and he's going to get in a terrible shooting stance in the prone unsupported position. So Mike, just make the worst worst platform you can. This is <laughs> this is called the gun bunny prone. That's what this position is called. And all Mike is missing right now is bleached blonde hair uh, and a bang energy drink. And, and he is ready to collect some likes on Instagram, right? This is gun bunny prone. So Mike, lay flat on the earth. That was very funny. And he doesn't want any bend in his leg. I'm gonna go ahead and ground this blaster. Uh, very good. It's going to irritate everybody that I dropped a tool. It's my gun. I get to throw it if I want to. If that breaks it, you need a better gun. Anyway, what I want is a very straight line from the barrel all the way down so that his whole body turns into a buffer spring. Some folks instead, Mike, I'm so sorry. Can I just move you around some? Oh, come on over here. Some people will do this or be out, and I know I just made it a little bit more dramatic, but the idea is, is now here, where's the, where's the energy going? It's just going to shoulder instead of his whole body acting like a buffer spring. And that really, really sucks, right? So we want to make sure we are lined up straight behind the gun, reaching down there and straight behind. Let's go ahead and drop our ankles flat. One more thing that could get shot off. And now our body is in correct position. Uh, for prone supported, what that means is we're going to put our magazines in the dirt. Back in the good old days of the M16A1 and A2 with crappier mags, when you did that, it could induce stoppages. That doesn't happen anymore. It's old, whatever. And now our guns are so good and our magazines are so good, you can rock these things in the dirt. They're gonna perform just fine and it provides a more stable shooting position. So mag in the dirt. The next thing we'll do is we'll widen out our elbows so that really we're able to lay here in the good test of a good shooting position for zero or for long distance is something that we feel like we could kind of fall asleep in. We're also remembering when we do very accurate shots like we're shooting in the prone, we want the earth to hold up the gun for us. And the less you can interact with the gun physically, the, be the better. So if Mike's pulling this way back into his shoulder, pushing it in and gripping tight, all that energy, muscle tremors, are enacted to the gun. And if you looked at his dot here on the target, it would be trembling and moving, which means when he goes to shoot, he'll have uh, the proclivity to anticipate the shot as the, it's moving around. And then he's saying, all right, here we go right now. And if you're saying now, your group is going to be a disaster. You're going to be a terrible shooter. At this distance, you should be able to just hold it nice and steady. Something that'll also help with this is ensure when you shoot very accurate shots with a red dot or, yeah, with a red dot is you dial the uh, light intensity down to the lowest readable level. So if you went one more click, it would disappear. It'll be hard to see and that's the idea. So that it has a really, really tiny, uh, tiny dot. Cool. All right. So what we're trying to do, don't think about moving dots or reticles. All you have to do is say uh, where you want to move uh, the uh, shot. So right now our windage is pretty darn good. And I don't really know whether were these the best shots he had or were these the best shots. Generally what I do is I just take the group average and say, uh, it's probably somewhere right in here, I think is the average. And these were kind of the two pushes which is just a guesstimate. So I bet we're gonna have to go right a couple clicks. Now, every single optic we have out here is a different, unique set for uh, adjustments, right? So what I usually do as an instructor, just across the board, because your optic's different than yours, yours are quarter MOA, yours half MOA e shift, is generally a quick way to do this at 50, is I'll just take the group average and then I'll use kind of one inch, two fingers right here. And I'll say my two fingers right here equals four clicks. And that's generally the good, uh, that, that kind of gives me the best average for a whole class. So two up, yeah, make it happen. What do you think? So Great left, group. Mm. 
I'd go six left. Okay. Oh, yeah. you're talking about clicks, not, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, gotcha. So okay. six left oh. and six up? Oh, I can go seven up. Okay. Right, but we were on, made no adjustments, and it shifted, which means it's not the gun, it's you. But it's good to know that. Your head keeps changing position. Another thing is, is I can wiggle an optic to make sure it's mounted properly. Sometimes we're chasing zeros all over the place, and it's actually, we didn't tighten it down enough. And so whenever I see a nice group and then it'll walk some, can be something like parallax, but it can sometimes be an optic that isn't properly mounted. So I just have you reshoot. I'm not falling for it. We were zeroed. Is it supposed to be here or here or directly on the bone? Like it's supposed to be consistent. <laughs> Whatever you decide to do, it's the same for standing, kneeling, prone, and it's the same. The real big goal is you do it the same way every time. Remember, we lay down in the prone and I said, pay attention to where your nose is relative to the charging handle. The cant cantation of your head. Cantation, that's not a word. <laughs> I'll give it to you. How about the articulation of your head? It just all that stuff, it's memorize it, make it consistent. And that's the deal. We're still zeroed and you're crushing it. That's very good. Yeah, this is just, you got excited, man. And that happens. Calm down, you already shot a little bit better of a group. And whereas we were struggling with windage before, now we're struggling with elevation. A lot of that can be breathing, mm -hmm. right? Yeah. Whereas uh, the windage is a lot of times the elevation, or I mean the uh, anticipation or the punching of a trigger. The, this can be more of breathing, but you never really know. It can be all kinds of stuff. Good job. We are zeroed. If you want to come one click right, that would be fine. But I don't know whether it's going to walk again. Shooting forward, but I think the <laughs> Zeroed. All right, so we just finished getting the whole class zeroed. I think we got just about everyone zeroed in three iterations. So I was in the military, zero process. It took all day. And so being able to do this quick, efficient, a lot of it's just pinning down the variables and understanding what's happening, understanding how to marry up optic, gun, and your eye without any fluctuation in your sight picture side alignment, reduction of parallax, all that stuff is good to go. Guys, make sure you zero and you practice good fundamentals. It's the foundation of all your shooting that rests on it. Train hard, train smart, we'll see you.